everybody, Bill1911 here. Hey, today we're going to take a look at a couple of neat guns. Um, at first, they're not going to look like they're related because they look nothing alike. Um, we're going to start out by showing you a comparison between the AR-15 and the AR-10. Uh, both were designed by Eugene Stoner, and uh, they're both some pretty cool guns. The, ones we're going to, the one we're going to do today is the AR-10, so let's get started. Okay, this is the AR-15. This is made by a company called Rock River. Um, it's a good solid gun. Um, AR-15s are AR-15s are AR-15s. Um, it's a pattern gun. So the upper can be taken off of this, the upper receiver, okay? Now, if you'll notice, there's like a line that goes right across here, okay? that whole unit can be taken off and replaced with something different okay a lot of people like the what they call a flat top upper and that means this handle isn't there it's cut off okay um, I rather like the handle on this because it elevates your uh, sight a little bit um, now that has positives and negatives but for a close-up gun, uh, out to 100 yards or so, this thing is, is more than serviceable. It's a terrific piece. So uh, it, it has an adjustable stock on it. But what this allows me to do is bring the stock further down into my shoulder and my head is still up where I can see the sight. So that's the only reason why I kind of like the, uh, the handle up, or up here on top on this. Um, it just changes the sight picture for me and, and works better for me. All right, so this is the AR-15, okay? And I'm going to leave it here on bench and let you take a look at its big brother, okay? This uh, is big brother, okay? Now, big brother is, as you can see, just plain bigger everywhere, okay? It has some very similar features. Uh, it breaks down in the same way. It comes apart pretty much in the same way. But this guy is chambered in the 308 uh, Winchester cartridge. This thing has a much longer effective range than the AR-15. Um, in Afghanistan, now, I was not there, so what I'm going off of are reports from guys that were there. They say that the enemy would get back past 500 yards away and they were shooting guns that were comp comparable in, in power to the 308. Okay, they had, had pretty good range on them. And they would shoot at us. The problem is, past 500 yards, this little 556 cartridge loses lethality. In other words, uh, it's not a sure thing that you're going to take them down if they're out past 500 yards. You might, but it's not absolute locked in stone, okay? This guy at 500 yards, trust me, they're going down. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. That, that 308 hits like a freight train, all right? So we're going to take a, an in-depth look now at this uh, um, AR-10. Um, it's, it's a bigger bigger, badder version of the AR-15. Okay, a couple of key differences that uh, we noticed right off the top, and that is that this AR-10, okay, is a flat top type receiver, okay? Um, so, this one's pretty comfortable for me because of the way the buttstock is designed. It shoots pretty darn well. Uh, other than that, um, your controls, uh, this is your uh, eject for your magazine, okay? When you Okay, over on this side, after we flip it, um, this is the bolt lock. This is what locks the bolt open, okay? This is your, of course, your safety, okay? Um, safe is up, fire down, okay? So, this is the charging lever, okay? It's got kind of a trigger piece right here on this side. Once you pull that, you can pull the bolt back with that charging lever. Now, I'm in a mechanically bad position right now to pull this thing back because it's all the way out in front of me. So, let's see if I can get a hold of her and lock her open. All right. So, 
I'm probably going to have to do that off camera. Okay, that got it. All right, so we're locked open. Now, this thing is much harder to pull that charging lever back than the AR-15, and that's because it's, well, it's longer. It's got a heavier recoil spring on it. Um, it's just bigger all around. All right, so uh, you course the trigger. You know where that is. That is. Um, in order to take this gun apart, it's pretty darn simple, okay? Um, there is a pin right here that we have to press out, okay? And it's that way on the AR-15 as well. Now, I'm going to drop the bolt back forward because I don't want it slamming shut. All right. Now, once you get this pin pushed out, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, I hate to set it on top of the scope like that. It's not really good for the scope, okay? Once you push that pin out, it won't come completely out of the receiver, but it doesn't need to, okay? At this point, okay, the whole bottom end of it will open up. You can simply, at this point, grab your charging lever and pull your bolt carrier and bolt completely out of the back, okay? It slides right out like that, okay? Now that's your BC and your bolt. You have to drop the handle down a little bit to get it out, okay? Get up in there, you. Okay, once you get it up in there, you can put the bolt back, line it up, and the whole unit goes back together like that, okay? Locks into place. So it's pretty easy to get to it. Um, it's made to be pretty simple so that you can clean it easily, take it down, and do what you have to do to it. Um, so with that, we're going to get started cleaning. Uh -huh. Now, there is a part on this that is it's going to require a special tool. And that is a special chamber brush. Now, this chamber brush, okay, as you can see, has a larger end on this end of it. Okay, now what is that for? Well, the bolt face, as you can see here, has these little teeth on it. It goes forward and once it gets into position it twists and locks into the receiver. Okay, So it's got on the, re on the receiver side, on the barrel side, it has these opposing bolt lugs and you have to get in behind it and clean out that area where these bolt lugs twist. Okay, So that's what this brush is designed to do. Um, you can get in there with a small brush and work around and mess with it. But boy, it's a pain in the neck. These things are very, very well worth the money, believe me, to use these things. So I highly recommend buying an AR chamber brush, whether it be for the AR-10, like this brush, or the AR-15, like this smaller brush. Now the big difference on these two is the diameter of the main part of the brush here, okay? Um, you may not be able to tell when I hold it up, but this one, the bristles are much larger in diameter than the bristles on this one, okay? So that's the big difference between these two brushes. So we're also going to need a, uh, a jag to clean that 30 caliber barrel. So. We're going to get in our little jag compartment here, and we're going to get out a 30 caliber jag, which is that one right there, okay? And we're going to uh, get ourselves a 30 caliber brush to work with, all right? Get everything out of the way, and open our box. And we're, first, we're going to need our two rod ends. Oh, come out of there, you son of a gun. There we go. Okay. Now, I have a jag on here already, but this is a 9mm jag, so I need to put that back in my box. Don't know why I didn't do that before. All right. So, we're going to assemble our rod to make certain that it's long enough to reach all the way through this barrel because this barrel is pretty darn long okay it goes quite a ways and we can't really get the the uh, 
the rod in through the back because it, this one's a little too short, I'm afraid. So that's why we always check how long our rod is. And if we need a longer one, I definitely have them. So yeah, this is going to require a longer rod. I'm about an inch short of the barrel. So with that, I will be right back after I get the correct rod, cleaning rod, for this AR-10. All right, so we've got our long rod, and when I say long, I mean this dude is long. It's actually four feet long, um, and it will get all the way through this gun with no problem. There was something I wanted to bring up about this particular rifle. Um, this one was built specifically for long-range accuracy. It has a heavy bull barrel that runs the length from this receiver all the way up. On some of the uh, AR-15s, um, they don't have that heavy barrel like this that goes all the way through. There's a constricted part about in the middle of it where the barrel shrinks. And it does that because that's where the gas system goes through. But that always kind of struck me as being interesting that here you are thinking you got a bull barrel and you actually don't, you know, <laughs> because it's got that little spot in the middle that's, uh, that's smaller in diameter. All right, so we're going to install our jag, okay, our 30 caliber jag, and then we're going to wet our patch like we always do, okay. And then we're going to push it through the barrel. All right, so patch is wet. Now, since I have a tendency to knock things over, I'm going to put the cap back on this. As I've said before on these broadcasts, if you spill bore cleaner in your wife's carpet, she's not going to be happy with you. At least mine isn't, that's for sure. So... Let's get her done. Now, this is the long part. Now, I always prefer, if I can, to go from the breech end of the barrel all the way through. And that's one of the problems with this very, very long, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, cleaning rod. Uh, one of the problems with it is that it is very difficult to get it started in that barrel and get it moving okay once you get it you can push it right through the barrel it'll go but you got to get it started okay now i just took this guy out and shot it recently so i'm going to show you that patch is pretty darn dirty all right so we're going to turn him around and use the other side of the patch. This is what's known as a um, double-sided flannel or uh, double nap flannel. Okay, that's what these patches are made out of. And I kind of like them. I make these myself. Um, as many guns as I clean, I need to save as much money here and there as I can. So we're gonna get it started. And once it starts, then you can push it right through your barrel. Now. Being that we went both sides with that wet patch, everything that's in, in that barrel should be pretty wet right now and it should, uh, should allow us to brush it and come out fairly clean. Now, I always bring this up. When you are brushing your barrel, okay, and you go into the barrel with these bristles, they will kind of fold back a little bit, okay, and contour themselves to the inside of the barrel. Well, if you get it part way down the barrel and change directions, these bristles have nowhere to go and they tend to kink. And when they kink like that, the diameter of the brush shrinks, okay? And it just doesn't quite do as good a job. So, um, you want to go in the barrel and all the way through until it comes out the other end before you bring it back, okay? And that's going to dramatically increase the longevity of your brushes. So, let's get this guy through here and start brushing our barrel. Now this brush is nowhere near as difficult to put in the barrel. It goes through fairly easily, okay, by comparison to that jag. Oh, get out of there. Oh. 
All right, so I think we're brushed. Now, once we brush the barrel, uh, the inside of that barrel, all the stuff, the deposits that were in there, when we put that liquid bore cleaner in there, um, all those deposits are now suspended in that liquid. So we need to get another patch, a dry patch, and put it through that barrel to get the deposits out. Now, in order to do that, we've got to put our jag back on. So we reinstall the jag. Mount our clean dry patch and push it through. And once again, it's going to be the same story. It's going to be really tough to get this started in this barrel. It always is. So we're going to bump it on the handle a couple times to get it going. And once it's in the bore, then we should be able to push it on through. Like that. Okay. Now, I think you're going to be impressed with how much garbage came out of this barrel. Take a look at that. How about that? All right, so we're going to turn around, use the other side of the patch. Now, if you notice, the liquid has soaked through in quite a bit of this patch. So that shows us that there was quite a bit of liquid in that barrel, and that's what we wanted, because we want that stuff suspended so it doesn't stay in the barrel. Alright, so we're going to turn our patch around and put it back on and put it back through the barrel again. In we go. This four foot uh, rod is a pain to work with, but when you need the length, you need the length. Alright, so now, you can repeat this process as many times as you need to to get that barrel clean, okay? In other words, put the bore cleaner back in it again, okay? Uh, wet it up again. Run the, the, the uh, brush through it. Do all of what you have to do. Do it as many times as you feel you need to to get the barrel clean, okay? So from here, I'm actually going to use a shorter rod now because I don't have to go as far. Okay, so we're going to take this rod here, and once we put this brush on, I should have enough to get all the way into the chamber to clean the chamber. So we're going to crank this devil on there, and we're going to push it up in there. Okay, and pull her back out and clean us up. Okay, and that's going to get things cleaned up in that bolt system. All right, so. Now that we've cleaned that end of it, okay, um, we're going to do a little bit more housekeeping on the inside of the receiver here because it always gets dirty in there. Okay, so we're going to grab a patch and we're going to wet it. And we're just going to swab out the inside of the receiver here. I'm going to try to stand this up and hopefully you'll be able to see inside a little better. Now, we're going to wet our patch and start cleaning inside. Now this is nowhere near this big of a headache normally to clean this gun. It's usually actually pretty darn easy to do it. Um, the problem is getting it on camera. So. Uh, you'll have to bear with me as I'm trying to get this done uh, because I, you know, doing it on camera is new to me. Doing it isn't new to me, but doing it on camera here is a little new to me. So we're going to get as much out of this as we can possibly get. Okay, and as you can see, there's plenty of garbage coming out of here. So uh, don't be in a hurry to get this done. Do as much as you need to to accomplish the task at hand. Because what will happen is you can actually get this whole receiver so full of garbage it actually clogs up and it doesn't function properly. So we don't want to do that. Now this gun, although it looks a little different, mechanically speaking it's almost identical to 
the AR-15. There are some little little pieces here and stuff there that's that's a little different, um, but nothing of real consequence. Um, on the 15, you'll find a little door that goes over the top of the ejection port. Personally, I think this is a very cool gun. Okay, it, it does a, a nice job on the range. This thing is just as accurate as you want. I mean, it really, really hits the target very well. I need to clean my bolt and my bolt carrier. Okay, so again, not hard. Uh, we got to get to it and get her done. So, we're going to set this right here. And you can see in the picture that this is a one inch diameter barrel. That's that's pretty heavy barrel. But that's part of what makes this thing very accurate. Okay. Um, this is made by a company called DPMS. Um, it's a very, very good gun. I've really enjoyed owning it and shooting it. Uh, I wouldn't say it's my favorite gun in the world, but it is one of them. Now, we're going to make sure we've got all these little nooks and crannies in here cleaned up. Get all the mud out of them, all right? So that everything moves freely like it's supposed to. All right. And it doesn't take long. Okay, I'm probably out of frame again. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to clean up all the nooks and crannies in this bolt, okay? Get everything as clean as we can. Um, it doesn't take long. It's just a matter of getting in there and getting it done. Now, there is on this bolt, okay, an index point, all right? Now, this index point is important um, because if you try to assemble this with the bolt rotated back like that, it's not going to go back together. The bolt has to be all the way forward or you're not going to put this gun back together, all right? So, uh, that's why on this side of it, you see that right here where the extractor is, is a little bit shorter on that tooth. These teeth are all a different diameter. If you notice, the, it's round to that point on the outside of these teeth, but that one is shorter. So, we need to make sure that's in the right place. Otherwise, it won't be able to move when we have the bolt come back to eject the spent cartridge. So, we're gonna keep going, get everything cleaned up. And then we're going to put some oil in this puppy. And then we can put it back together. I was thinking I was done a minute ago. Almost forgot to clean this. All right. All right. So now we're going to get a dry patch and make sure we got everything cleaned up. In fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and use my rag instead because there is a good bit of area to clean here. Okay. Dry all this up. And you'll see in a moment from the rag that there is quite a bit that came out of this. So it is worth taking the time to clean all this up. I mean, you really need to do this. Uh, if you don't, you're going to clog this thing up to the point where it doesn't cycle properly. All right, so make sure that you do all these steps. And again, you can repeat those steps as many times as you feel are necessary. When you look at it, you look at it, you say, it's not clean. Well, then... Do it again. Go through it again until you got it where you want it, okay? Uh, don't be afraid to use your cleaning brushes on them because that's not going to hurt them at all, and it's going to help keep everything clean, all right? So, go through it. Now, if you don't have a store-bought cleaning brush like this one, you can always use an old toothbrush. Um, now, I cautioned about this before. Once you've used that toothbrush on this thing, do not try and use it in your mouth again because if there's any residue on it from those chemicals, that can really cause you problems, like maybe even kill you. And we don't want that. So, you know, I want all my, my viewers to live long, healthy, happy lives because, well, that's just darn cool, you know, living a long time and, and being happy. Oh, I missed a spot. All right. So let's get this done. All right, that does that. Okay, now, that looks pretty good, but we're just going to wipe him down. Okay, this is our charging lever, okay? Uh, you remember when we took it apart, that was up inside the receiver. 
pushed up in, okay, and this then mated into it like that, and then comes all the way forward like that, okay. So this is our charging lever, all right. So now we're going to get out the oil, and we're going to put some drops of oil in here. Okay, now since this bolt rotates, okay, with every single shot, that bolt is going to rotate as it moves, okay. We know that's going to happen on every shot. That means that is going to be a high wear area. Now, both the BC or bolt carrier and bolt are very, very hard steel, okay. So they're not going to wear out quickly, but... You know, you start getting 10, 12,000 rounds through a gun. You start seeing some wear here and there. So we're going to make sure that it's lubricated. Now, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. As a gunsmith, I've had to change parts that were worn out on guns. Okay, we expect that. We know that's going to happen, okay? Um, I have never had a part go bad from being over-lubricated. Needing to be cleaned? Yes. Uh, get a little gummed up sometimes? Yes. But I have never worn a part out because it was under lubricated or uh, over lubricated. I have worn parts out from being under lubricated. Okay. So we really don't want that. Um, down here in South Florida, we also have a huge problem with humidity. Um, much more so than, than pretty much any other place in the country. Um, humidity here on a dry day, and I'm not kidding about this, is about 95%. On a wet day, or uh, excuse me, on a dry day, it's about 75%. On a wet day, it's like 90%. So uh, it gets really, really humid here. And what, that, what happens is that you take your gun out in the middle of summertime out of your house out into that heat and wet air out there and it will actually sweat okay so I tend to use a lot more oil than a lot of people are comfortable with and I'm not going to apologize for that because I think it's important to keep the gun lubricated now that said drowning a gun isn't going to help you it's just going to make it slippery so I like to Wherever I see an area where it's obviously rubbing, you can see that it's shiny right along here. Okay, let me work it in the light a little bit. All right, maybe you can see the shiny spots that are on there. Well, that's an area where we're getting metal to metal contact. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on it. Okay, doesn't have to be a lot, but it should be oiled. Okay. All right, that's another contact point there. And we've got one here. All right, so we're going to put some oil on that as well. All right, now. Okay. There we are. Now, we should be ready to go back together with the bolt. Now, we're also going to take care of our charging lever here. Now, this has... Remember I told you about that little hook that's on it? I mean, it's quite literally, it's a little hook. All right, so, and it's a contact point. It doesn't get a lot of wear, so it doesn't need a ton of oil in it. I mean, just the tiniest drop is plenty. And work it in a little bit, and it'll be just fine. And that's too much oil, so I'm going to dry off some of that oil. Okay. Now. We can see that there are some contact points on this charging lever where we're getting a little tiny bit of wear on it. This charging lever is aluminum, so it's soft. And dragging across steel, it will get more wear. So oil it as much as you're comfortable with, as far as I'm concerned. Now, some people will say no. Some people will say, no, only put oil here, only put oil there. And if you're in a dry, a dry climate, that's valid because what happens is dust will uh, accumulate in that oil, okay? And it can cause you a problem because it gets gummy, all right? So gummy is not a good thing, okay? All right, so we're going to put this thing back together now, and I'm going to try to get it here where you can see it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put this charging lever up in here, 
Now it'll have to go in a little bit before it pops up into its position, like that, okay? Um, if you get it too far back or too far forward, it isn't going to go in. So, once you got it where it belongs, we're going to take our bolt and slip it up into that track that's on the charging lever, and then put the whole thing back in the gun, okay? And it'll lock once you've got it set. Now, um, <clears throat> we can, if we want, we can get in here and put a drop or two of oil in here. Um, this thing's pretty darn clean in the action, so I'm not going to do much with it today. But you simply close your receiver back up, okay? And then we're going to take that bolt, that pin, and just shove it right back through. And once it's through, our gun is locked up, and she's ready to shoot. So that is the AR-10, okay, by DPMS Panther. Okay, it's a really nice gun. I love this thing. Just a ton of fun. Oh, one other thing. For a 308, this thing is one of the milder rifles that I've ever shot in 308. Um, it has what's known as a buffer. In other words, a big spring back here. And as that bolt comes back, it just absorbs recoil into that spring that's in this buttstock. And it takes a lot of the bite out of this gun. So it doesn't kick very hard for what it is. For 308, it's very mild to shoot. So there we are, the DPMS Panther. Hey everybody, Bill1911 here. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, don't forget to like us, and please subscribe, and by all means come to visit us at askbill1911.com. Also, I want to talk to you about something that's very important to us, and that's your safety. So please, don't try any of the things you see on our videos until you have thoroughly reviewed and understood our safety procedures. If you're under 18 years of age, do not try any of these topics without the express permission of your parent or guardian. Thank you.